Hey guys, I'm Britt and welcome back to my channel. And today's video is special because I don't know if you guys noticed, but we have reached 100 subscribers. What? Yes, we have made it. We out here, we working. So I just wanna say thank you to everyone that have subscribed, that have been with me since the beginning. And I can't wait to grow so much with you guys. So, I mean, this wouldn't be possible without you guys because if you guys weren't watching, I would literally just be talking to myself. So, thank you. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, there's so much time to do it. Just go hit the button right now. Go hit the like button. Go hit that subscribe button. Go hit that bell button. Just go hit all the buttons real quick, you know? So, for this video, I wanted to make it special. So, I decided to do a Q&A. And let me tell you, this is my first Q&A ever. I have never done one before. And you want to know why? It's because I've just been so nervous. I don't know. I feel like if I go and post it on Instagram, because that's that's where you do the Q&A stuff. Like, if I do that, no one would ask me questions. <laughs> I felt like I've always wanted to do it ever since it came out. And I don't even know. I don't even remember when it came out. Honestly, but I've always wanted to do one, but I just thought no one would ask me questions So, you know when I when I woke up on Monday and I saw that we hit a hundred I was like, you know what? I gotta do a good video. I need to do one for them. I need to get them more involved, you know, and I was like I should do a QA. and a and then I was like, oh, no, I shouldn't do a q and <laughs> I'm gonna get no questions So I was like, you know what? It. let's just do it and I was like okay I posted and I was expecting two questions and it got five so <laughs> I'm kidding no I definitely got more than five I got like 10 or whatever but I got questions um I wrote them down I'm only gonna be doing 10 I got them here on my phone so I guess we should get started um I did get some inappropriate questions which I'm not gonna answer it because my family watches this, so <laughs> maybe next time. But first, let me just show you guys. Like, look at this. Look at these cars. These are my dream cars, by the way. That's my wallpaper now. Oh, they're so pretty. If you don't know what car that is, go look it up because they are beautiful. Anyways, question number one How tall am I? You know, like, on a good day, I would say I'm 5'5", five five, but I feel like, recently, I feel like I've just been getting shorter. You know what I mean? Like, every time I, like, especially now that I'm home around my cousins and everything, like, I just, I'm like the shortest one. And every time, I feel like I'm just shrinking every time. But I would say, on a good day, I'm definitely 5'5". Five five. So... That's a, I think that's a good height. I mean, I want, want to, I don't know. I think that's a good height, honestly. I don't even know what a good height is, but I think that's a good height for me. A question number two. When am I coming back to St. Kitts? Honestly, I've been trying to plan a trip for a while now, and you just have to stay tuned for that one. I definitely want to show you guys what my country it looks like it is so beautiful it's so nice there definitely a spot to visit if you haven't already um but as for right now i nothing is set in stone yet of when i plan to make a return back there but i am working on it so just be patient and stay tuned for that hopefully it's soon but i'm not gonna tell you guys or promise you guys anything because I am still not a hundred percent sure of when I will be making that return back there but hopefully it's soon that's all I can say hopefully it's soon number three what is my favorite thing about Canada huh I don't think I have a favorite thing about Canada because like being in Canada I don't care for Canada if you know what I mean, like, I don't care for Canada. I can literally live anywhere. Okay, no, no, literally not anywhere. But I can live somewhere else other than Canada. But the reason why I miss, or the best thing, I guess, 
My favorite thing about Canada is hanging out with my my family because basically they all live here. But if it's uh, like if it, if we were to live somewhere else, I wouldn't I don't think I would really have a favorite thing about Canada, honestly. Just to be honest, I know that sounds bad, but it's true. I like to travel everywhere else. But my favorite thing about Canada is definitely my friends and my family here. Uh, number four, what age did you start living abroad and were you ready? I basically started living abroad. I left home when I was 17. I know some of you probably think that's young. Me now, I don't think that's young. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's young, yeah. But that's when I first uh, left for college and I was in Kansas. So that's basically a 20 hour drive. So I was definitely far away from school. It's not like I could like just drive home whenever I wanted or like for weekends or whatever. Was I ready? Um, I think, yeah, I think I was. Honestly, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, I never know what to expect when I leave home, but I knew I would be fine. As long as I had the friends and the support that I need in Kansas, which I did, thank goodness. Thank goodness for all the people that <laughs> in Kansas, because if I didn't have those people, then I would be ready to come home within a heartbeat and I would have probably been homesick and everything. But since I did have the support from the girls on the soccer team and like everyone else um, outside of soccer there, then I was fine living abroad. And I think, yeah, I was ready. I, like, I remember my coach would always ask me like, oh, are you homesick yet? I'm like, no. I'm not homesick, you know, I'm fine, you know, I'm just chilling, just playing soccer, going to school, hanging out, you know, basically all the things I was used to doing at home anyways, um, so yeah, that, that was, I think I was ready, so if you guys are ever thinking, if we, got, if I got young people watching, and if you're thinking about leaving home, and if you're not sure if you're ready, I mean, definitely try it, what, I mean, if you don't like it, you can always move back home, that's, that's what I think. Like, you can always go back home if you want to. Question number five. What are some recovery tips you would recommend after training? I do two different things, I guess you can say. So if I go to, if I have training, which is in like soccer practice or something, then um, it depending on where I am and what stuff, like equipment I have around me, I used to take ice baths back in the day, just because I had them. It's not like I could just go out and just, I don't have money like that now just to go buy ice all the time and just take an ice bath. So I haven't done that for a while, but I used to take ice baths after practice when my, I just felt like my muscles just needed it. Um, definitely drank so much water afterwards to gotta hydrate. And I think that's because when I was in school, water was free. And like juice was only served in the cafeteria or you had to buy it and I I'm cheap so like I never bought juice so I would always drink water till this day I just choose to just drink water which I think helps obviously a lot um definitely stretch if I have a foam roller then I'll definitely roll out but sometimes I just don't so I just stretch if I feel like I need to stretch and then say training after like the gym or something that's a little different um i'll definitely foam roll if i have one um i definitely go into the sauna i've been starting to do that more lately going into the sauna because i feel like it just relaxes your muscles and it just gives me that extra sweat that i need and I also after the gym i feel like since i just put in all that work i need to eat healthy afterwards too so i like to like make myself a smoothie either just a regular smoothie protein shake or um i eat i try to eat really healthy like i don't go for a burger and fries afterwards just because i just i decided to put all that work in so i just want to also on top of that eat healthy so i don't make myself like pasta or something just to help my body like recover um but those are just like some things. I mean, it's not big things. It's not like I go <laughs> and do tons of stuff. It's just the small things that I try to do 
just extra stuff. But I hope that helps with that question. Question number six. What's the best slash worst part about playing overseas? Now that's an interesting question. <laughs> Let me go with the bad first. I think the worst part about playing overseas, I guess it depends where you are, but um, since I'll just say my experience in student because that's where I just was. But I think the worst part about playing in Sweden was being so far away from my friends and my family. Playing like across the world is fun. It's so much fun, but like the time zone, especially for my, my family here in Canada or my friends in the States, like it's so hard just to communicate with them. And sometimes I just felt like I was in a different world from them because it would be like, I would be waking up when they would be falling asleep or vice versa. So I never never got to talk to them as much as I would like to. Or it was like I would try, but then we would both end up being really busy. So then we just kind of lost communication. Along those eight, seven months that I was away. Um, so I think that was definitely the worst part about playing overseas. The best part about playing overseas was that, I don't know, I feel like I like to go and experience other people's culture and being in Sweden really made me realize like, oh my gosh, people, people live different from what I'm used to. Like people celebrate different holidays, they have different holidays, they do different things during holidays and I just love just to observe all of that. So it was definitely the best part just seeing how they lived and how they do things and how differently it is from what I'm used to. So I think that was definitely the best part and also meeting new people and experiencing new things. That's also like the best part about playing overseas, I think. So if you definitely have the opportunity, I would take, I would take advantage of it because it's like one in a lifetime opportunity type thing you know even if it's just one year and done um i think it's definitely an experience that if you have the opportunity to take question number seven how many pieces of sushi can you eat i have no idea to be honest and i think i should make a video on that because i think that would be a good one i have i think i could eat a good amount though because hey especially being home now all you can eat sushi you know guys you for the people out there that have been watching my channel for a while, you already know how much I love all you can eat sushi. So, I think I can throw them back, kinda. Eh. Hmm, I think I can, I think I can, but I think I should make a video or something to see how many, because I'm interested now to see how many I could eat. I would say, but like right now I would say maybe like, I don't know, not even 10, I think I could eat more than 10. Comment down below if you guys think I should, because I will definitely try. <laughs> Especially since I haven't really had sushi being back home yet, I think I should try. I think that would be a good challenge. I don't care if it doesn't get any views. I think that would be a good challenge for me because I would be eating sushi, so. Question number eight. Why did you start YouTube? I started YouTube, actually, okay, no, I wanted to start YouTube for a while now and i've always i think i first wanted to start it when i was watching youtube i forget who i was watching but they it was like a group of friends that lived in a house together and they all had different youtube channels and that we all be a part of it and i think that's when i first kind of wanted to do it and i would joke around about it with my family and be like oh we should do that we should go live in a house and we should make youtube videos blah blah blah, blah. and they'd be like yeah, yeah yeah but of course we're young like who who has money to go get a house <laughs> like but so that never happened and then i think it was this year actually where i was watching it was at the beginning of the year i think like march where i was watching youtube a lot more and it was like i was watching with uh one of my friends we were watching cj so cool and we were watching them all the time like from <laughs> From morning to night, from when we woke up to when we fell asleep, like we were just watching them 
all the time. And it was like, if you guys don't know who CJ So Cool is, basically this family that they just make videos together. And it's awesome. I love just, I think I watch them more for the kids because the kids are so cute. And it's like, after watching them, it's like, I want to start a YouTube channel. I want that. I want to make a family. I want to <laughs> not make a family. I want to have a family. I want to do adventures with my family. I want to do fun things with them. I want to do all this stuff. But obviously, my life is not like that right now. So when I went to Sweden, I thought about making one because I was like, Everyone is not, like, I'm the only one here. No one's here. Everyone's always asking me how it is, telling me to send them videos. So I was like, you know what? Might as well just start a YouTube channel and have them all watch there so I don't have to individually tell them how it's going and everything, which I think helped a lot. Plus, for me, when I get older, I can look back and be like, oh, yeah, I did that. I completely forgot I did that, but I did that. So that is why I started my YouTube Number nine, what do I find most challenging about YouTube? What I find most challenging about YouTube is that it takes a lot of time, especially if this is not priority number one. Um, if this was the only thing I was doing in life, I think it would be a little easier. It would still be challenging, but it would be a little easier. But for me in my life right now, it's like I am juggling okay, I need to film this day, I need to edit this day, I need to post this day, um, I need to post on my social medias. And then on top of that, it's I'm still training, I have to figure out when to go work out. And then it's like, if I have a job or not, go to work. So it's all these different things on top and it's it could be challenging at times to figure out my time management with all of this because there is so much that goes into YouTube that I think people don't really realize. I think maybe people are like, oh yeah, it's easy because all you have to do is film, edit, and post. Which that's what I thought. But there's a lot more that goes into YouTube. But for the most part, I think it's just organizing everything and like coming up with what kind of content to make and what people, what I would like to do, but what people, I think what other people would like to watch. So it's definitely a process sometimes, but I think, I think it's, it's been going good. I think I have a pretty good handle on things, you know. Number 10. Is it hard starting a YouTube channel? I think the hardest thing is myself because I would overthink it. I would think, oh, no one would watch it or no one would subscribe. You know, I just didn't think I knew how to. I just didn't give myself that much confidence in that area, I guess you could say, until I actually just was like, you know what, whatever. I'm gonna start it, I don't care. I'm just gonna do it. And when I decided just to do it, of course, I'm never satisfied with my videos or I think I could always do that much more to one video or I could just do something else to make it that much better. But at the end of the day, it's just, I did it, you know? And I think that's the hard thing for me when I wanted to start my YouTube channel was just being able to do it without overthinking everything. But once I dove right into it, it's like, I'm so glad I started back then instead of today you know because it just gave me that much more confidence in myself and of course there's some days where I'm like oh I don't feel like doing anything I just feel like shutting it all down right now I don't want to do anything and it's like days like today where it's like oh I have a hundred subscribers I'm doing something I mean it's a small part but it's such a bigger thing to me so I think once you just get over the overthinking it's not hard at all but those are the 10 questions that I chose. I hope I answered one of your guys' questions. If I didn't, I'm sorry. Um, I did get one where it was like, who's your favorite freshman? <laughs> Which is from Oral Roberts. When I was there as a senior, they were freshmen and now they're seniors, which is so crazy. But they will always be little freshies to me, but I don't have a favorite one, but um, I love all you guys. I am cheering you guys on and I hope you guys have a great rest of the season and I hope you guys' senior year is one to remember, honestly. 
thank you guys for all your support, honestly, because without you guys, this wouldn't even be possible because I probably would already gave up. But thank you so much for the support. If you haven't already, remember to go like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.